I have through my whole career almost always studied ferns, which is for historical reasons. Almost everybody chooses the group they work on because they were influenced by a, a guru, a mentor of some sort, which is exactly the case with me. So my mother was an avid naturalist, and among the things she was interested in was uh, flowers. So she named all the flowers and kept track of when they bloomed during the year. And I really picked up on that when I was very young, um, like before I was 10. And uh, all through my teens, I was one of these total nerd naturalist types. I had a, there was a big closet in our house and I filled it full of everything I could collect, you know, beehives, bird nests, snake skins, turtle shells, you name it, it was in there. Um, and I had a plant collection, a little plant collection, a bunch of dried leaves and a book. Um, my big thing in those days was butterflies, and I assembled a pretty nice butterfly collection um, at the time. But I discovered, taking high school biology, that I didn't particularly like killing animals, and that that was part of the um, landscape for being a biologist if you want to study animals. And it was at that point that I started getting more and more focused on plants. And as it turns out, I'm not very good at killing plants either, so I tend to, I tend to collect parts of plants and not whole plants. I am a dedicated journal writer. I keep journals all the time. And uh, like there's a half a shelf of journals over there from different field trips. Uh, and that actually is a prominent part of my sort of self-definition is as a journal writer and going back to see what my perception of things was like in the past and how it differs from how I see things now. Uh, one of the humbling lessons that I get from that is I'm often surprised by the how well I understood things a long time ago. It's not, you know, I keep wondering, have I really gotten anywhere with this? Um, because many of the questions that I had long ago are the same questions I still have now. Yeah, I, and my, my brain works uh, in ways that suggest how, how it might be. For instance, I'm really horrible with people's names. But if you ask me when and where I saw a particular plant, I could tell you exactly where that was. Um, so there's there, there's something about my wiring that is disposed to being in touch with the natural world and being curious about what's going on. So, first of all, this gives you a sense of what an herbarium specimen looks like in general. You've got a sheet of paper with the plants glued on it, sometimes taped down the big pieces, and then there's, there are various labels. This one has what? One, two, three, four, five. This specimen is the basis for a name of a species that I'm working on, and so it's particularly valuable. And that gives you a sense of the whole uh, nature of this activity. I will now go in and look closely at these plants and collect uh, information about all the different features of these plants and then compare them to many of the more modern collections to see which ones belong with this name and which ones belong with others. I am probably within two years of retiring. And so the real question is, how, what am I going to do with this passion, you know, at that point? How, how am I going to form what I'm going to do? And I think um, so far, the ideal answer is to maintain a presence here in the department as an emeritus professor and have, a, have a, essentially a research presence um, to sort of pass on the torch to, you know, managing the department and managing the herbarium to other people, especially Michael. Um, and um, be here uh, working on my own projects. I have an awful lot of things backlogged that need attention. Two years, you think? Wow. 
Do you know how old I am? 30 something. <laughs>